factoids, new century. As the success of the Chaotic Century, a fantastic war-driven story that tackled some really deep themes for an anime driven to sell toys with some fantastic mecha battles to boot, New Century definitely had some big shoes to fill. So how well did New Century size up to its predecessor? Let's find out why Zoid's New Century was so awesome. <laughs> New Century is set in the same universe as Chaotic Century, although there isn't exactly a timeline with years differentiating them, you can definitely tell it's set quite far in the future. So the battles have essentially just become a sport, and not just any sport, but quite easily the biggest sport on Planet Z. We follow our protagonist, Big Cloud, who's a scrap metal dealer, essentially he's the Zoid's equivalent of someone who browses Facebook Marketplace looking for things that are free grabbing those and then trying to flip them for a profit. However, he quickly goes from a smart ass thief who can weirdly enough, eat with his feet, to a certified Zoid pilot within one episode after the Liger Zero takes a liking to him, and then abducts him and single-handedly wins a Zoid battle against the Tigers team. The team Bit joins and the one we'll be following throughout the rest of the series is known as the Blitz team. And the supporting cast within this team consists of Leon, Lena, Jamie, Brad, and Dr. Tauros. Now, New Century is very episodic and doesn't have much of an overarching plot. It's essentially one big tournament arc spanning over about 26 episodes, while the Blitz team just attempt to climb the ranks, until the final big tournament arc, that being the Royal Cup at the very end of the series, which is a tournament you have to win if you want to get into the prestigious Class S. You could easily base like a whole 20 episode arc just on the Royal Cup, and it could still be enjoyable. Just make it a bit larger in scale, with a lot more battles, a bit of deeper concepts, and a bigger, badder, more complex villain, it could be something akin to Steel War Run. Yeah, I know that's a huge stretch, but I just finished reading it, so it's fresh in my mind. And for whatever reason, reminded me a bit of New Century. While New Century isn't as deep, and feels a lot more flashy and buy more producty in a way, compared to Chaotic Century, introducing all the fancy CAS systems for the Liga Zero, Zebex still ended up making an amazing show with the material they had at their disposal. And hey, on the plus side for the CAS, it looked pretty damn cool in action, and provided a lot more versatility for the Zoids battles. And considering every single episode features a battle, it's refreshing to see different fighting styles every now and then. Although, as a whole, I did enjoy Chaotic Century more, New Century has a lot more awesome moments and standout episodes for me that you could just re-watch over and over again, and I have re-watched them over and over again. As a kid, most of my weekends would just consist of re-watching New Century, typically just in the background while I'd be playing Pokemon Emerald or Diamond or something for the 50th time. I mean, I've watched New Century that many times, I can easily script this video without even having to rewatch it. Most of my childhood just seemed to be constantly rewatching DVDs and VHSs that I owned, while just replaying the games I thoroughly enjoyed. Probably because I didn't have access to a proper internet connection until around 2010, just after MW2 came out. Childhood tangent aside, a great example of one of these episodes you can watch over and over again is one I've mentioned quite a few times. It's episode 20, The Shadow Fox, Brad's Betrayal. This is high key one of my favourite episodes of Zoids of all time. It's pretty hard to put a finger on what exactly makes me love this episode so much. I didn't really like Brad over Bit as a character or the Shadow Fox over the Liger Zero, but I guess perhaps it's the moody atmosphere created in the Foggy Hills as Brad tries to chase down this enigma of a Zoid that's only been heard of in rumours, only to be captured, tortured, escaping by somehow stopping his heart rate and faking being passed out after his big roller coaster ride, and then follows it up by stealing the Shadow Fox, using it to destroy the Blitz team, and the episode climaxes with an awesome fight between the Shadow Fox and Liga Zero. It's an awesome episode to say the least, and if you watch that episode and still aren't sure about Zoids, then maybe it's not for you. Now, let's add a bit of structure back into this video and start talking about some of the characters featured within New Century, because it definitely has a diverse range. We'll start with Big Cloud, our oblivious smartass of a protagonist that happens to be a bit of a natural as a Zoid pilot. Although the Liga Zero's abilities definitely carry him a bit throughout the series, he's one of the few characters that actually talks with his Zoid as if it's his partner, which Leon remarks on as being a little bit strange, and asking if he can really understand what the Liga is saying to him, to which Bit just replies, 
Can't every warrior who pilots a Zoid communicate with it? He clearly develops a strong bond with the Liga Zero. And with time, throughout the series, we eventually get to see Bit develop into becoming a great Zoid pilot. Next, I guess I mentioned Leon. He's Dr. Taurus' son and Lena's brother, who was essentially the captain of the Blitz team, who felt like he was being held back from seeing the world due to being tied down by his father and the team, which is in direct contrast to the stability that Bit almost seemed to need at the start, after endlessly scouring the world as a junk dealer. This contrast is explored as early as episode 2, where Leon asks Bit about his life up until this point, and the conversation I mentioned earlier about Bit talking to the Liger seemed to really resonate with Leon, and makes him think that there's a lot more he needs to learn about being a pilot, and he figures he'll have to travel the world to go on this journey of self-discovery. The next time we see Leon, he pilots a red blade Liger, and actually talks to it in the same kind of way that Bit does with his Liger. Next up is Lena. She's a passionate, hot-headed, aggressive character, who I'd say is a bit of a classic Sundere. Unfortunately, there isn't a lot more to say about her. She's a pretty arrogant pilot that proves herself occasionally, but usually more or less ends up embarrassing herself. Although, she can pretty much rope Harry Champ into anything, so that definitely comes in handy throughout the series. She initially pilots a D-Bison, and then later on moves on to a custom gun sniper with almost enough guns to fill up her ego. Brad is a mercenary who happens to get a bit comfortable with the Blitz team, and ends up being with them throughout the whole series. He's a skilled Zoid pilot with a laid-back attitude and loves his prize money. I can understand that. He initially pilots a blue command wolf, but later on ends up getting his hand on the Shadow Fox, which really lets his abilities as a Zoid pilot show as the Command Wolf sort of holds him back, if I'm honest. Jamie is a Blitz team strategist, and doesn't really partake in many battles. He's sort of the younger brother of the group. For the first time of the series, he piles a Terrace Bomber, which he adores. That Dr. Tauros underhandedly trades in for Arenos. While he was very unhappy with the change, it really was necessary for Jamie to tap into his full potential. He unlocks this alter ego, which is like a higher state of mind, which allows him to pilot his extremely well. However, after any battle in this state, he tends to lose his memory of everything that happened throughout it. Lastly for the Blitz team, we have Dr. Tauros. He's the team manager and the father of Leon and Lena Tauros. He's definitely young at heart, always messing around with his own little Zoids model kits, as well as being a fully-fledged mechanical engineer, creating the entire Liga Zero CAS system that we all know and love. He messes around a lot and definitely shows that he's the owner a lot of the time, like when he sold Bit's entire hangar of Zoid parts and traded in Jamie's Terrace. But all in all, he's fun, he has good intentions, and works well as a manager for the team. New Century also has a fantastic lineup of memorable side characters, like the unforgettable Fuzzy Pandas team. Nah, alright, alright, that's, that's not funny at all as an adult. As a nine-year-old kid, that was the funniest shit I'd ever heard. Nonetheless, we do have the Tigers teams. The boys' names are definitely not memorable, though. We got Kirkland, Omari, and Lineback, who are recovering throughout the series. Other notable side characters consist of Naomi Flugel, a badass gun sniper pilot with a fierce reputation behind her, Harry Champ, a rich kid with a whole lot of Zoids that endlessly simps for Lena, Jack Sisko, Another mercenary who ended up making his own team with Chris and Kelly Tasker. They all pilot lightning sixes. We also have some more notable antagonists from the backdraft group, such as Stigma Stola, the calm and reserved elephant pilot who forcibly leaves the backdraft group to pursue becoming an official Zoid pilot and face Bit. We also had Pierce, a Zabbit and Storm sort of pilot, who excelled in her piloting abilities and always proved to be a bit of a nuisance for the Blitz team. She too ends up leaving the backdraft group, and at the end of the series, we see herself and Stola at a bar watching the Royal Cup together, which was a nice little touch. The last notable character from the backdraft group would probably be Vega Obscura, a prodigy child roped into the backdraft group by who we can only assume is his mother. The last character I wanted to talk about was Dr. Leon, who's had a lifetime rivalry with Dr. Tauros, and is constantly seen manipulating others, such as the Tigers team, in order to somehow win against Tauros. I always found this thing with Lena kind of odd though. I get that she looks like her mother and he wants to protect her and sees her as a daughter in a way, but kidnapping her was a bit much. Now, similar to my Chaotic Century video, I want to wrap this one up by talking about the actual Zoids in the show. We'll start with my personal favourite, the Liga Zero, which goes for a really sleek, minimal design, and had the flashy additions of the Jaeger, Schneider, and Panzer, which were all welcome, with the Panzer really showing its presence towards the end. The Berserk Fury was an awesome Zoid to see go rampant, and is one of my favourites of all time, along with the aforementioned Shadow Fox, but I think I've already talked about how much I liked that Zoid before. The Elephanda was a really cool addition as well, and new 
flying zoids like the Zaba and Reynos were always welcome. It was also cool to see the Blade Liger return in a red colour scheme as opposed to the original blue. All in all, a lot of zoids from Chaotic Century do make a reappearance within New Century, but New Century obviously offers a lot of new zoids that feature a much sleeker and more modern design, so you can definitely tell it is set further in the future. So with all that being said, that is what makes New Century so awesome. If you haven't watched Zoids New Century, I definitely recommend checking it out. You don't have to watch any other series beforehand, you can jump straight in, it's a standalone series. And I mean, feel free to watch all my other videos at the end, or pop some on screen, or anything like that. Just about Zoids, I've got plenty to offer, such as why Chaotic Century was so damn good. Feel free to check that out if you haven't seen that already. Nonetheless, I hope you all enjoyed this one. Feel free to like and subscribe if you did enjoy and leave a comment down below. Always happy to read them and reply to them. No worries at all. Anyway, hope you all have a great day. I'm rambling enough. Peace out. See you later.